He has a beard and he has a mustache. He looks like dressed up in white. He is very bright. He is Heavenly Father's son. Jesus is our brother. He'd sacrifice a lot. Like, he tells us to care about other people. He'd like warn people about stuff, like, and make sure they're all safe because he cares about each one of us. Candle of faith, candle of faith, candle of faith is lit you and Jesus. We are your children, we are your children. Make every step with you and faith with hope and love. We love Hey guys, welcome back to Grade 10 Catechism. Today we'll be learning Part 2 of Lesson 4, The Heroic Witnesses of Faith. Please bow your heads as we begin today's lesson with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, God the Holy Spirit, You are holy, You are holy, and You alone are holy. O Holy Trinity, one God, You are holy, you are holy, and you alone are holy. O our Mother Mary, you are full of grace. Please intercede always with your Son, Jesus Christ, so that we may become missionaries of the Mother Church, proclaiming your Son's passion, crucifixion, and resurrection, the ultimate love and mercy of the Father to the whole world. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Roman Emperors and Religious Persecution From the time of Emperor Nero to Diocletius, Christians had to suffer ten severe religious persecutions. It was Emperor Nero who started torturing Christians on account of their faith. The torturing began with the accusation that Christians caused the fire in the city of Rome in AD 64. Although the fire did not cause much damage, the emperor himself ordered the Christians to be killed, while in reality, the emperor's own people were behind the incident. St. Peter and St. Paul became martyrs during the reign of Emperor Nero. The next leader of Rome, Emperor Domitian, adopted the same policy of cruelty towards Christians. During the time of Emperor Trajan, Ignatius the Bishop of Antioch, Clement and Telesphorius, two bishops of Rome, and Simeon the Bishop of Jerusalem, all became martyrs. Marcus Aurelius killed Christians, exiled them, and sentenced them to lifelong punishments with grueling work. September Severius tortured those who received baptism and were preparing for baptism. Those who gave up their faith were set free. Maximin Tras tried to kill church authorities. Maxi and Dadius set free the people who were worshipping Roman gods and tortured those who refused. Emperor Diocletian tortured Christians by dismissing them from their jobs and by destroying Bibles and other religious books. He destroyed churches, imprisoned the leaders of the church, and tortured them mentally and physically, including many saints like St. Agnes, St. Sebastian, and St. Felix, who all became martyrs. In AD 313, the Church received freedom from Emperor Constantine, the Edict of Milan. In the beginning of the 3rd century AD, some emperors tortured Christians in Persia very cruelly, causing many faithful to be martyred, including St. Candida, St. Barbara, St. Martha, and the Bishop of Seclusia Cestophon, along with his sisters, the servant in the palace Posey, and his daughter. Along with them, many bishops, priests, and religious were also tortured and martyred. During the Middle Ages, many gave up their lives in Iran, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, and China for the sake of the Christian faith. Martyrs of Later Times St. Thomas More, the Chancellor of King Henry VIII, became a martyr in the 16th century for Christian faith and the teachings of the Church. He became a martyr for opposing the king who desired to leave his wife Catherine and marry her maid. St. Thomas More believed that heavenly bliss was more important than material achievements and accepted the death sentence, 
proclaiming that no political ruler had the authority to divide the undivided church. St. Maximilian Kolbe was a priest who gave up his life for Christian love. During the Second World War, Hitler imprisoned many in concentration camps. When one of the prisoners escaped, Hitler decided to put ten prisoners in a gas chamber to teach the others a lesson. Father Maximilian Kolbe became a martyr by taking the place of one of the ten prisoners, and in the gas chamber he gave the other nine people consolation and peace before their deaths. The Martyrs of India Among the many martyrs in India, John Brito and Deva Sahayanpilla are especially memorable. John Brito was born in Lisbon and he came to India as a priest. He did missionary work in Madhira and became a martyr for proclaiming the gospel and spreading the Christian faith. Deva Sahayanpilla was born in a Brahmin family in a village near Nagarkoil. He was the minister of Maharaja Martana Varma. He came into contact with Delano, a Dutch captain, and became a Christian. The king imprisoned him as he accepted the Christian faith and was shot dead on Mount Katari in 1752. Other courageous martyrs in the church in India include Sister Rani Maria and Father Arul Das. The Courage of the Martyrs The faith and courage of the martyrs when they were being tortured was of the divine nature. The conversation between St. Polycarp, the Bishop of Smyrna, and his judge when he was about to be killed is a great example of an unshakable faith. The judge said, Curse Christ and I shall set you free. The saint replied, I have served him for 86 years. He never deserted me. How can I curse such a king, my savior now? Religious persecution did not weaken the church, but rather it gave it strength and resilience to overcome any obstacle. The persevering faith of the martyrs attracted many people to the Christian faith. Even their persecutors, seeing their faith, chose to convert and confess that they too were Christians and later accepted martyrdom. The seed of the church grew very strong and powerful in the land flowing with the blood of the martyrs. So as we conclude this lesson, let us pray that we be filled with the spirit of sacrifice and to have the divine courage to take up the opportunities that come our way to be witnesses of endless love and selfless service as the martyrs did. A few thoughts from this chapter. The people of God were being persecuted for their faith from the time of King Herod, but being filled with the Holy Spirit, the apostles and their followers received martyrdom for their faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. During this time, many Jews and non-believers received baptism and became members of the Christian community. The Christians rejected the king as their God, which made the Jewish people angry and caused an increase in aggression towards Christians, which led to the start of persecution. All the Roman emperors, starting from Emperor Nero to Emperor Diocletian, partook in the persecution of Christians. During this time, there were many martyrs in the church, especially in the Eastern Church. The church received freedom from the Roman Empire by the Treaty of Milan in AD 313. And in the end, as the result of these martyrdoms, the church grew more and more powerful, and spirit filled all those who were drawn to the truth of Jesus Christ. And that will be today's lesson. Thank you all for attending. We'll conclude today's lesson with a closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for all the blessings you have given us this day. We thank you for always being with us, and for guiding our lives in the direction that leads to an eternity in the kingdom of heaven. Forgive us our sins, and keep us hidden from the evil one. Help us to always stay strong in our faith, and to turn to you in our difficulties. As we conclude today's lesson, Enable us to take the things we learn and to implement them into our lives. Blessed Mother, we place this cause in your hands. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Thanks, guys. See you in chapter 5.